Next up, let's start reviewing basic Ajax requests and how that works and how you communicate uh, with your backend. So we're going to use Laravel here, but don't worry. Uh, you should be able to translate this to your backend of choice. No problem there whatsoever. We'll mostly be focusing on the front end tooling and the library that we'll use. Okay, so I will set up a view app here using Laravel and then CD into it and open this in Sublime. Now, if you're familiar with Laravel, you'll know that it actually includes some view uh, bootstrapping right out of the box within your resources assets JS folder. But I don't want to touch this just yet for a specific reason. So let's ignore it for now and just work directly with the public scripts. And then we'll talk about Webpack or Gulp and bundling later. Okay, so here's the app.js that's included. I'm going to delete that and start from scratch. We're going to assume that we are binding to an element called root. And then I will link to this file directly. Okay. Now, you'll know that with Laravel also, we have a home page that loads this welcome view. And if I take a look at that welcome view, this is kind of like the splash page for Laravel. And in fact, if we take a look at it, yep, that's what you get. But we're just going to delete all of this entirely. It's not relevant. Instead, we're going to build up our div with an ID of app. And then, of course, uh, we're not going to be using NPM for this particular lesson. So we will reference view through its CDN. So we will reference the CDN that we've been using this whole time. Next, let's load up the slash js.app.js file that we're going to be working with in this lesson. And yeah, when we're ready, we basically want to say, when this component is mounted and ready to go, we want to make an AJAX request to our server and then render the response, basically. And we'll keep it very simple to start. Uh, so, so what are we going to fetch? Um, maybe, if I go back to my Laravel routes file, Maybe something Laracast-based, like we want to fetch all of the skill categories. So maybe if you visit slash skills, uh, then I'm just going to return, uh, it could be a database call, or we're just going to return an array. And we'll do something like Laravel, view, PHP, JavaScript, tooling, stuff like that. And again, if you're familiar with Laravel, you'll know that when you return an array from a route like this, it will automatically be converted to a JSON response. So that's all we need to do here. If we close this out and return to app.js, the endpoint that we want to hit is slash skills. Uh, but how are we going to perform this? Uh, you have lots of different choices. Uh, for example, you could use the, the new fetch API. Uh, you would need to polyfill that for, for older browsers. And it's kind of a lower level thing. There's some gotchas associated with it, but that's an option. Uh, and it comes right out of the box. If you happen to be using jQuery in your project, you could totally use jQuery.ajax or jQuery.getJSON. That's a no-brainer. Uh, but otherwise, if you're not using jQuery, I wouldn't necessarily recommend pulling in jQuery just to get this API here. Uh, instead, you might use a library like Axios, which is pretty popular in the Vue community. If we visit the GitHub page, yeah, you'll see the API is nice and simple. So we can, well, of course, uh, for, for most projects, you'll probably pull it in through NPM. But again, we're just going to reference it as a CDN. You can see we make a GET request to an endpoint, and this is promise-based. So once we have a response, we can log it to the console. OK, very, very simple. The same would be true for a POST request, or we can call it in this general way. Very, very simple. OK, so let's go ahead and grab that. Come back to Sublime. Welcome. I will import that. And I think we have everything we need. So let's say axios.get skills. And then when we have a response, we'll just console.log it so that we can inspect it. OK, let's open this up in Chrome. So here we are. I will inspect this, go to the console. Uh, it looks like we have a different root element, but that's OK. Here's our response from the Ajax request. And if we go to data, sure enough, we see it. Now, a quick note, uh, be sure to take a look at the network tab when you are debugging. This is a good way to see, OK, w what request is going in and out? So if you want to see only XHR requests, you could do it here. You can see the headers that are being sent as well as the response. So notice in this particular case, if we want to fetch our data itself, you want to use response.data. So that means if we were to come back, response.data, and let's see, oh, the root div is called app. Anyways, if we were to give that another shot, there's the array. Very, very simple and seamless. 
So if we come back, yeah, well, like what might you do here? Uh, this is a root instance, so you might perform this on a view-specific component or somewhere else, but we're going to keep it simple for now, and we'll say skills will default to an empty array, but when the component is mounted or even created would be fine. Either works. Uh, we make our Ajax request, and when we are done, we could say this.skills equals response.data. Now here, yeah, as you always would, we could have a unordered list, and we could say v4 skill and skills, and then echo out the skill. So if we come back, actually this is going to fail, but if we do come back to Chrome, yep, we get use of undefined constant skill. So what's the problem here? Uh, this is something you need to be aware of if you're using PHP or Laravel or Blade. Uh, in this particular case, this is JavaScript specific, but we have a Laravel Blade file. So Blade, the template engine, thinks it should parse this. But we really want to tell it, no, Vue's going to take care of this. I don't want you to deal with it at all. So we can prefix this with an at symbol. And that's our way of telling the Blade compiler, yep, just ignore it. You don't need to worry about this. So if we come back and give it a refresh, there you go. Now, another option, of course, is you could still use vText. And sometimes that's a, a preferred approach. And you'll get the exact same thing. OK, so think about what you did here. In your master page, this isn't a master page, but in, in your project, it probably would be. Uh, you are importing the Axios HTTP library. Then, within any of your components or view instances, wherever is appropriate, you perform an AJAX request to your server, you fetch the response, and then you assign it however is needed. And because Vue is reactive, well, as soon as we update this skills property, it's watching, and it knows, oh, I'd better reevaluate this. So it does, and spits them out within a list item. Now, we're, we're of course going to dig into this quite a bit more, but to finish up this episode, uh, you might have used a tool called View Resource in the past. Now, this is still very much an option, but it's not necessarily the, the recommended choice by Vue these days, uh, especially with Vue 2. Axios tends to be the, the more recommended approach. But anyways, you might know that with, with Vue Resource, if you used it, you could do things like this, this.http. And then you could say, perform a post request to this endpoint and send through the data, if that's appropriate. Uh, if you still want to do that, you could do something as simple as Vue, and then just assign it the prototype, just basic JavaScript. And now you basically have the exact same thing as you had before. In fact, the API is very, very similar. So if we come back to Chrome and give it a refresh, you're going to get the exact same thing. Okay, still a lot more to cover, but this will get you started.